pronto. All right. And it's recording right now, so we should be all set. Everybody, I hope everybody's enjoying all the weather that's going on. <clears throat> Been quite the quite the bit of snow. I think most of you will probably not have class tomorrow. Sounding like. All right. Well, it's still snowing. Yeah. Awesome. Well, which brings us to the next thing. My school's already canceled class. So if you have lab <clears throat> this Thursday, we're going to have to move it to next Thursday. My school has canceled class school for tomorrow. So therefore, we're not allowed on campus. All right. So we're going to move the lab. It'll be next Thursday. So it'll be right up. All right, great. Liam, I'm glad your sister's joining us, and that's not a problem. Thank you for telling me, and welcome aboard. So everybody listen up now. Again, if you have lab scheduled on Thursdays, we will not meet this Thursday. We'll meet next Thursday because the school is closed. I get no decision in this. <clears throat> so we can't get in the fab lab, and that's what you really want to use, and that's what we'll do. So I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that. And listen to my voice cracking. <clears throat> we do not have lab tomorrow night. It will be moved to next Thursday. I'm going to follow that up. All right? <clears throat> next thing we're going to do, we are going to go to here. Is that Young Engineers A Middle School. We're going to use Google Classroom. I like it better... Yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. The lamp's going to be cool. I want you to go Young Engineers Today Middle School. What I'm going to do is we're going to create, let me go to this, and I'm going to invite a student. So what I want you to do right now, right now, go to Google Classroom, all right? And then you're going to use 7YO. Zero O M and join it. Liam's already joined it. We'll just start putting everybody on here. So let's get everybody on there. Go type in Google Classroom, add yourself to it. And in fact, I can drop and put things up here. So, for example, I am matching materials. I can edit. We can do all those good things on here. So you'll have it there. So, for example, I'll put an announcement that says, hey, we don't have class there again tomorrow. All right. The code, let me give it to you right here again. The code for students is, all right, Logan's on there. Well done. Liam and Logan are both on there. Seven Y zero zero. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Copy it. And I'm even going to put it in our chat. That is for Google Classroom. All right, Ethan, I need you to put on there. Hannah, Logan, Calder. Let's get Chris is on there. Well done, Chris. Max, oh, it's good to have you back, Max. Let's get you on there as well.
Logan Graham's on there. Who else? Let's get these on here, folks. How do you get Google Classroom? Search Google Classroom. Just type in Google Classroom. It'll take you over to it. What's not working? Ethan, what's not working? Is the code not working for you? Remember, the code is, I just shared it with you, at 7Y-O-0-O-M, not three zeros. All right, here, use this code. I'm literally going to copy the code for you. I'm going to type an answer right here for you, bud. Use that code. Or go to Google homepage and click the nine pox image and see your Google domains. Oh, what he's saying is another great suggestion. Right up here, you can go up here on your Google site and click there and see it there as well. While you're waiting, if you don't already have it, we sent out an email. Let's go ahead and get Fusion 360 rolling. Get that downloaded. But the educational version, I'll show you that down the road here. I'm near to use the how do I log in. You just sign in with your email address, your Gmail address. And then you'll ask you which class and you'll put it in there. It's very straightforward. No worries. If we did it, I'll help you after class. Or I'll help you next day. All right, there's another one. Got it. One, two, three, four, five. We got five of us. I got DJ Panda, whoever's DJ Panda. No worries. Just go to Gmail. Just go search Google Classroom and log in as if you had a Gmail account. Use your Gmail. And if you need to have a Gmail account. Oh, Ethan West. Very nice, Ethan. All right. While this is going on, let me show you the next thing. The code I've sent it. Do I All right. Now, let's do the next one. All right. If you don't already have it, now let's look over here, folks. This will be recorded. You can come back and look at it. I'll help you if not down the road. Let me put everybody's hands down. <clears throat> So we have go to Fusion 360 and then go to this line here. Not any of these up here, but go to the one that says Fusion 360, free software for students, educators, Autodesk. This is the one we want. All right. Hello, everybody. Yes, Mr. McGinn's got it. I have a Gmail account. Probably need to create one with your folks, just a simple one you can use in this class. Calder, we'll do it down the road, okay, bud? Come on with me now. We don't have to do it here. Oh, okay, so Mr. McGinn's got his. All right, let's go on here. Fusion 360 software for everybody. Let's go ahead and hit this. All right, now, if you already have an account, some of you have done this, but we are going to be doing new things. We're not doing what we did um, a year ago. We've got some new things, show approaches, but it's really important that we get CAD work in here. All right, so create an account. You're going to create an account or you're going to sign in. All right. Good. Most people, 
How many people, don't put your hands down, how many people installed their Fusion 360? Good job. All right. Guys who didn't, let me just show you. This is where you're going to go to. You're going to create an account. And then when you're done creating an account, you hit register and you download it. I'm going to go over here. Wait to bump up. Country. You're going to sit down and play United States. I'll be down here somewhere. United Arabs, United States. Educational role. Well, not surprisingly, student. Then you put in your birth date year. You've got to be 13 to do this. So maybe ask your parents to make sure it's okay with them. We're just installing Fusion 360 and use a uh, parent's birth date or your birth, you know, do it in the year 2000. But make sure for those folks who are doing this that you talk to your folks. Aiden, you're a little late, buddy. We've already got a Google Classroom. Okay, man? You'll have to just watch the beginning of this video. I'll record it. And I will share it later, but you got to get logged into Google Classroom, my man. We'll get you squared. Meg, did you install Fusion 360 yet? That's what we're going through right now. So you put your United States student, your birthday. Make sure you've got to be at least, it says 13 on these, or you're going to need, they're going to go for parental permission. So just have your parents there. Make sure they understand what you're doing. But all we're doing is putting 360 on it. Ah, uh, that's weird, Aiden, because we've been here for a while. So, sorry. All right, now, next thing. So, Educational Royal, in my case, I'm going to put down February 21st, 2000. All right, I'm going to hit Next. If I already have, I'm going to sign in. You'll put your first name, your last name, your email. Make sure your folks are there and they agree to this. Confirm an email, password, and you agree to create the account. If you've already had an account, sign in. It may ask you then, it's going to do a confirmation. It's going to send you an email to your email account. You fill it out. When they say about schools, put down either your school, and if you're homeschooling, put down young engineers of today. Just enter it in the database. Repeat it twice and you'll get in. Good. I'm glad you already downloaded it. Good job. All right. Now, it looks like everybody's set to go then. We're going to go here. Um, we're about to get started on back into using Fusion then. Um, the big projects you're going to get this spring is here. We're going to be doing a lot with Fusion, doing new things with it. In the lab, you're going to get to use the 3D printers more, the other mills, and the big shop bot. So very excited about that. For the people who got here late, we do not have lab tomorrow night. My school has been closed. We cannot use the school facilities as if it's closed. So we will do it next Thursday. All right? Also, I'm going to, I've got a handout. I'm going to download it. This is the first part of what we're doing today. Go to see where it says Fusion 360, make a lamp part one. Download that, please. Raise your hand once you've downloaded it. This way you have it. This way if you get behind, you can look at what we're doing there. So raise your hand once you've downloaded Making a Lamp Part 1. It's under Handouts, Fusion 360. Make sure you download that handout, and then we're going to start up in one moment. All right, I have nobody raising their hand, which is, seems strange to me. I got a couple now. Guys, just go right over here where it says under handouts. If you look at your control panel, it'll be under handouts. Click on Fusion 360, making a lamp. I really can't go on until I know that Ethan's done this and Hannah's done this.
Aiden has done this. Just leave your hands up. Don't put it up and take it down. Leave it up. That way I know if you've done it. All right, I got Max done it. Logan, I need you to do it. Good job, McGinn. He's got it. Calder, you please do that. Ethan, please do it. Raise your hand. If you don't know how to raise your hand, ask me to write a question. I can't find it. Go in the control pile, Ethan. No problems. And you should see something in there that says handouts. Click on the bottom arrow to it, and you should get it. It's not installed. It's not an install. Aiden, Fusion 360, Making a Lamp Part 1D is a PDF. All right. Calder. Just click on Fusion 360, Making a Lamp 1 Part 1 PDF. It'll download it for you. And I'll put it on Google Drive if you can't find it there. Because we got to get rolling on this. You don't install it. It is simply a document so you can follow along with us. Or if later you want to go back through what we've done. I'm, it's basically a printout of this uh, portfolio we have here. Of uh, this portfolio, this presentation slide. Okay, I'm going to put everybody's hands down. Let's talk about CAD. We talk a little about what is CAD and camera view cube and understanding the basics all gets us going in this. Um, and then we'll start up. I'll bring up Fusion in a moment here. What is CAD? It's computer aided drafting. Many of you know this, some of you don't. It's cool. Used in engineering to make ideas come to life. CAD software makes precise measurements easy. Fusion 360 is an example of it. Okay. Okay, calls you, how do I raise your hands? If you go up in the control center, there'll be a little hand icon. Click on that and it'll tell you. See a little hand thing, it'll do it. I'm going to lower everybody's hands here now. All right, now, let's get back on this. And then we'll save and we'll get you going. All right, so here we go. Go in, if you haven't already, let's go ahead and launch Fusion 360, a little F there. If you don't have it installed, you can install it later. Just watch what we're doing today. This is recorded, and you can follow me on the webinar. I'm redo it anytime this weekend. And where's my Fusion 360? I've got it up here. Let's see. Bear with me one second. Sometimes running this other software kind of messes me up. In fact, what we'll do is, you should see something like this on a screen. And these kind of things right here. That's where the toolbar comes up. Um, real quick, just so I can communicate, and I know I'm going to stand the presentation slide. I'm not going to bring up Fusion 360 and run it live. I'm going to just use my slides. That's why we did it. This is a main screen, right? You should see where all the work's being done. Raise your hand if you have this showing up in Fusion 360. All right. Aiden's got his hand up. Ethan's got his hand up. Hannah's got her hand up. Again, I hope you got your hand up. Get up here. Max, hopefully you have it installed. If you don't have it installed, just follow along and we'll get you there. How to get what, Calder? Please just start up. Okay, Calder. Now you need to start up the Fusion 360 program. If you didn't install it, you won't be able to start it up. But that's okay. We're recording this. You can do it later once it's installed. Calder, did you install Fusion 360? Not the handout. That's just to cover my slides. The actual program. Again, 
No worries if you didn't. We can go ahead. I'm recording this. You can catch up on there down the road. So let's just watch what we're doing here. Plus, I have the PDFs. You have that now. All right. So that's the main work. All your work's done in this area. There's the menu bar. We're going to get into each one of these sections. Now, something about CAD, about Fusion 360, it's almost like a library, and we only need a book in the library. So there's a lot of it don't worry about. I could teach literally a two-year course on nothing but Fusion 360. We wouldn't do the same thing twice. But that wouldn't be very fun, and it's not a Fusion 360 class. It's an engineering class, so we're going to do more than that. So specifically, okay, um, you're going to get to build, like, we're going to build foam gliders, or really big, big foam gliders, 36-inch long, super big gliders. It's going to be really cool. All right, over here is they have it called a browser. This is where you view all the objects and properties here. Things you make are going to start showing up under that browser. All right. You can zoom in and out, use the scroll wheel, use two finger attention. All right, so you can use the scroll wheel on your iPad. You can zoom in and out if you got a you know mirror window on that. Let me see if I can bring up my fusion so I can show this too though. Whoops. All right, I'm going to sign in my account real quick here. All right. So my Fusion account's coming up right now. We'll go back and forth. It's going to be a little bit tedious, but we'll do it. I'll get around that. All right, so just what I was talking about. This is the main work area on Fusion 360. All right, there's your browser where everything is. You know, cube up over here. I'm going to try to pull this down. It gives you the, you know, top view. There's our home view, kind of octagonal. All right, you can zoom, use your mouse to zoom in and out. All right. Oops, I mean to do that. All right, then let's go back here. All right. Try panning along the plane. Middle button, slide with two fingers. See how that looks like? You can do that with it. You can slide it back and forth. So let me go back over here. See, my mouse, my Mac, it doesn't always work that way. Let me see on my PC here. I'm running in both a Mac and a PC. Yeah, if you've got a PC, it works. Press the center wheel button on your PC, and you can pan back and forth. Not so much on a Mac. Mac, go down here, click on that little hand, move it around that way. So please, everybody, go ahead and do that so you see it. But use that to spin around there. You can use these to zoom in and out down here as well. You know, orbit allows you to spin around on things, which is kind of a cool feature. There's Pam. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom to fit. All right. All right. Everybody try that. All right. Then we're going to start creating something by clicking, but let's make sure before we go... So everybody feel like they can zoom and get around on things. Down at that bottom window, let me just show you that again, so that way you have this. There's this choice here. If I real quick create, um, you know, a new component or just anything, a box. Uh, All right, now if I do this, all I'm trying to do is the zoom window here. Zoom window and zoom fit. See how that fit it right up there? 
So when you make something, you can zoom in and out. We'll come back to that in a minute when we make our box. I'm going to show you all that. But there's our, my zoom in. I can pan around this. And you can also do, you know, this is, all right. Okay, now I'm going to undo all that. We all good? Put everybody's hands on. Can you all zoom, pin in? You get a sense of where everything is now. Raise your hand if you can do all that. Because being able to zoom in and out, one thing I've found, and I don't care if it's Tinkercad, Inkscape, V-Carve, Fusion 360, SolidWorks, you name it. Zooming in and out, we don't often spend a lot of time on it, but it really makes a difference on understanding what's going on. All right, it's telling me my Fusion is might not be optimal. Well, I don't really worry about that. I'm older Mac, it's going to be fine. All right, now, let's go back to here. To my presentation. All right, jumping around here a little bit. I am on, it's already 728, hard to believe. No time. All right, so you're going to go here. You're going to go under Create Box. So do Create Box. Put everybody's hands down. We try to do a lot of slides, so it makes it easier to understand. And then you're going to click on that bottom. If you can see, there's a side this way, side this way, and the bottom. Click on that bottom. A little blue dot's going to be there. And then you'll end up with this. Get to this point. Don't worry that these numbers necessarily disagree. All you're doing is trying to drop it in there. All right. So, again, let me just go through this with you again. Start by clicking Create. It's up there. Then select box. It's right here. Then create a solid box. You need to choose which the three planes lie on. Let's just use the bottom, the bottom one. Click and drag from the points to make a box. So from this point here, you're going to drag to make your box. doesn't matter what it is. We're going to select the width height to 3.5 centimeters. Click OK. If you're not using centimeters, you know, change it over here. There'll be document settings, and we'll make it three centimeters. All right, so let's go over here. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So I go up to create. All right, I'm going to come down here to box. I'm going to go on the flat spot there. I'm going to drag it out. Now mine says millimeters. Whoops. There's three points this, so I almost messed that up. All right, there it is. And what did we just say? We want it in centimeters. So you go to Document Settings, click on that little arrow, Change Units. Now let me, and you can change it to, you can change the active units. Now over here's a little button, you don't see it. You can go millimeters, centimeters. You can say, OK. And that's what it is. that good there and that's in centimeters you're making 3.5 centimeters how are we doing everybody have you made that box make it three and a half by three and a half by three and a half so I'm gonna go to mine so I'm going to click on that. I made that. Let me go ahead. I may just redo it again. Up here, I can do unchange. Now I'm going to go back up, create. I'm just doing this because I'm teaching you all. Box, bottom. Uh, my units are not what I want. I'll make that 3.5. 3.5. Doesn't matter. I'm going to make it all 3.5. We're going to pull it and change it anyways. Whoops. 
350, didn't want to do that. 325. All right, and we're going to make this into uh, 1,000. Let me see if I can change it to centimeters without having to get out of it. All right, centimeters. I can just type in centimeters here. All right, now I'll go back out this way. Did I make it 350 centimeters? Why do I think I did? So the cool part about this, just go and do my, didn't want to mean it quite that much, but we'll go ahead and just knock it out. Let's change my units right now here this time. This is probably would have been better to do it this way. I'm gonna make that centimeters. Craig, here's my box. By now everybody knows how to do this pretty well. So here are my sides of my box. 3.5. All right, there we go. All right. That fills up my whole screen, but there I'm at 3.5. Everybody can see it. We're good. Raise your hand if you got a 3x5, 3x5, 3x5. We're going to push and pull it anyways around, so don't worry. Just grab a big selection on it, just like this. Triple click, you'll get the whole thing. Um, let me see. Under bodies, you'll see there's the one body. That's that box. So if you notice that. The origin's showing us up right there. And my screen's blocked, but there's a properties box. It's probably easier at this point just to redo it if all of a sudden you have it wrong. Okay. So again, Jordan, Hannah, Liam, Logan, have you guys gotten this box? No problem, you didn't. That's why we're here. Okay, great. Max, how are we coming on this box, bud? Notice I click once, I get one side. Just like in Tinkercad. Twice to get everything. All right. Let me bring up my notes. All right. Just like we said there. Now what we're going to do here... Right there, click anywhere on your workspace. It's like push and pull, and we can move it all around. All right, so. So let me go over here, watch. So, so go up there, modify, you got fillets, you got all kinds of things, you got Craig, extrude, revolve, it's kind of like a push and pull type thing. So you got extrude, so we can do this. That extrudes something out, how cool is that? And you say, okay, boom, it just closed it. So I'm going to go ahead and push it again. Yeah, we're not, it's really not careful what we're doing. Press and pull. Here it is right here. So I'm going to go and pull it. I'm going to take it back up to. All right. Okay. So there I have. So I can use, so just go over to this modify, press and pull. Q is actually, what you probably want to start to learn how to do is find a shortcut of these things. So there's okay. If I want to do again, I pick the face I want to pull, click that, hit the letter Q. You can go up to the mat and you can go modify Q. If 
But I'm going to tell you right now, what you're probably going to want to learn to do is this fast key, which is Q right here, hit Q. And then pull it up. And you can type in what you want it to be. So you can play with this a lot of different ways. All right. So that's the push and pull on this. Again, just one last time. Click on a face. There it is. I can either use the menu to say press pull, or I can click on that face and click Q. Then I can say, hey, I want to pull it up. All right. I can pull it down. I can set all my values. It's negative because where it originally started up, it was bigger. Watch, we go up here. All right. Okay. Just going to say okay there. Okay. Now we can double click the whole thing or pick an edge. Uh, close that. We don't want to offset anything. Change my mind. I'm not going to offset. So that's offset. Just changed everything. Let's go back. All right, good. Remember, you can always go back here. And I have set the face. And I just shifted the face over one as well. I did. Imagine I moved it from one plane to the other. All right. Now let's go back here. All right. So, we, we're doing the press pull. We've done that. Now, click and drag to cover the entire box and set the radius to 0.35 centimeters. So right there, we're going to select the whole box. And we're going to select the radius to 3.5 centimeters. We should get something like that. So let me do a 2. Let's see here. What did I do just wrong here? All right. Now on here. These will allow you, like, there's press and pull, there's redo, there's for putting a hole, for drawing something. Uh, what did we want to just sit there and do on that? Oh, let me go back and look. I just hit the reset, which flipped it over there. I'm going to cancel. And I'm going to undo that. Okay. Okay. Right click anywhere on your workspace and select press pull, click and drag the cover and tie rack sets the radius to 35. All right. We'll try that right now. So let's go back. Show you what that meant by doing that. All right. Press pull. Select. Cancel. Let's try this again. All right, so press pull, offset, we're going to make it 0.35, what we just said, sorry about that, oh wait a minute, let's see how many faces, so that moved it up there, but that's not really what we wanted to do, Mr. Dubik. 
All right, let's try this again. Let's see here, let's try it again. Press pull. It's not loading us. I'm not sure why I'm not getting all the faces here. That's very bizarre. Let's turn this off. I'll hit fill it. This will do one. This is not really what I wanted to do, but this will do one at a time. I'm going to find out why we're not getting it. See, there's one fillet. There's Mr. Dubik's win. All right, hit fill it again. 0.35. That's okay. We're going to do something with it down here. All right, there we go. There's a fillet, fillet. Let me do this. Fill it. Point three five. Feed fill it. That one's already been done. So it looks something like this. I like my, I'm going to be honest, I like my Mac better for doing this. All right, let's go ahead here. Fill it. 0.35. Should I play the station 0.35? <laughs> That's good old Lexus talking in the background there. All right. Should so I play the station 0.35? No, Alexa. All right. So there I'm playing with some fillets. Hello everybody, I was I do not have Gmail. Okay. What are we doing in the lab? Okay. And in case you're wondering, um, we're going to make dog tags or engravings on metal using another mill. And then we'll be making rings down the road out of sheet out of uh, aluminum. So some cool things there. Alright, let's go on the back part. Sorry about a little bit longer than we'd like. All right. All right. Now, let's go to. Um, all right. You use the view cube to change things. I'm going to move this out of the way so we can see it. I don't have to keep going back. This cube up here will change the faces on that. And then you can create a hole. If you go to Toolbox, you go to Create, select Hole, we can put a hole in it. You pick the top, that's where you want it, and it's going to get it right there. There's the diameter of the hole right there. And there you go. There's where the hole is on the box. One last step. To render your design, click Model and select Render. We're going to do that in a minute, and you're going to get a cool-looking shape on it. Okay. So let's go back up to Render here in a second. It's all right. Sorry. My computer feels the need to notify me of every text my children send me. Okay. So let's go in here. I'll show you that so we get that done today. Whoops. All right. So if I go here, create, I'm going to say I'm going to make a hole. It's going to ask me where. I'm going to make that. I'm going to select this face right there. And I'm going to make it I don't know, depth of 1.2. We'll make it the, the diameter 2.2.
Let me say, okay. There's my hole. All right. And I use this to get around generally. So there's my front. I pull this around all up here to look around at that vent. Okay. My scenario is it's offset. We really messing with it. It doesn't matter. Then what I can do, I can should be able to double click on that. And then I'm going to render it. And you can render it to give it different looks. Okay, so you can render it. So now look at this. So you get a black. And we're going to do this with the lamp. And we're going to do a bunch of different colors on this. All right. So when you render sheet metal, you can render. Render. Well, there's all kinds of stuff you can sell. Starting back. Okay. And we're going to get into like physical materials. You're going to do it. You can pick out like right over here. We're going to get into this more, but here you can go to physical materials and you can say, I want a porcelain. If you drag it over here to porcelain, this what, that's what you get. You get porcelain. Porcelain glaze because you didn't like porcelain. You can do fabric, canvas. All right, so you can really play with all kinds of things. You can do glass looks cool, I've always thought in this. Let's get it some cool looking color glass. Oh, here's a mirror. All right, so you can play with all kinds of stuff on that. So that's one thing with 3D, I want you to realize. And that's why you can get stuff that looks really real when you're done. Okay. Oh, my one was that. Okay. All right, great. So we have that one. Now, let me send you one more thing here. All right. The next thing we're going to start on is a... Um, We'll stop here in a minute. But what we're going to do next Monday is we're going to start making a lamp. All right. Let's go back out of render here. Back to model. There we are. There's where we're back where our model is. Okay. And we get all kinds of funky things going here. And if you paint it, you can paint it different colors. You can do everything. So you can get really impressive stuff there. And if you watch this at the bottom... If you watch this at the bottom, I can go back using this thing. There's a little timeline. Go in your timeline. It doesn't matter what we made tonight. All we're trying to do is learn how to make it. This is great when you're trying to figure out well, what did you do when you did it? Where did I where would I change it? So go ahead and try that as well. What we're going to do over the next week or so is go through all the things of designing a lamp. And then I'm going to give you something, and then you're going to design it in here. And we're going to look at how we can take something in Fusion 360 and put it on a 3D printer or CAD it on another mill or put it in a big shop bot. And, of course, that all depends. Some things lend themselves. You know, this is perfect for a uh, 3D printer. I wouldn't necessarily use a shop bot with it, but you could do some, but I will show things that you would. Okay. Can I ask, uh, tonight, first time through up here, let me give a poll here. How is my pacing so far tonight? All right, we have, okay, 100% voted, close the poll, share results, 75 said it was good, 25 is a little too fast, 
So I may just sit here and go back through it with everybody for the last few minutes, make sure we got it. And then we'll go on to sketch. Well, Monday is where we're going to do a sketch. We're going to learn how to draw something and make it into three dimensions. All right. Okay. So just let's do one right now. So for those who thought I went a little bit fast, the last few moments, if you just remember, Google Classroom, you need Google. I've shared that file with you. Um, let Write it down if you don't have it. So let's talk about, I'm mean, sorry, let me just start from the very beginning. One, we don't, we had to move tonight's, tomorrow night's lab to next Thursday. My school is closed due to the weather. We're not allowed to have lab then, but we'll have it next Thursday. Two, you want to be on part of Google Classroom. I'll email the middle schoolers the code. I can try to find it right now for you. Please just write it down. It's this code right here. Do a screenshot of this right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Looks to me like we got just about everybody here, so good. So everybody's on it. Great. That's where I'll post and put things up for us, okay? We've got that. We started using Fusion 360. If you didn't install it, get it installed, but it sounds like everybody has, so good job on that. All right. We started off. I'm going to do File New here. New Design. We set our document settings, all right, and sometimes it hides on my screen over here, so let me go ahead. It's under the browser where we can start to see things. If you get something like this over here, this panel will show you things I've made in the past. You can actually see it there, all right. And this is all the different projects, and you can share down the road. You can share those projects with me. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to go to Document Settings. Hopefully, I can get that to pop out. There it is. There's my units. Change it right here. I use this up and down barrel like that. I'm changing it right off the bat to centimeters. Boom. Set OK. So if that makes sense for everybody, then I went to Create. All right. Um, a box. I clicked on the box. I clicked on the bottom of that box. And then I just dragged it out. It really didn't matter to begin with. And I could make it, here's one half, one half by up there. So I'm going to make this three and a half centimeters. I'm not going to worry about the top. I'll pull it in a minute. Three and a half. All right, I'm just there. I'm going to say, okay, boom. Notice I have a new body down here, and I can name it. So if you're making a bunch of stuff, you'd start naming it. I'm going to close it up right now. I can also turn it off by just turning that light on and off. All the useful things down the road. Click on the top of that. I can go to Modify, Press, or Pull. That's Q. So if I do that, I hit Q, and up arrow. I'll make it one and a half. I say OK. All right. I go, oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Right? No. All right, then if I click on that, all right, you can do a press or pull. It's asking for you to select, and then you move it up this some more. Or you could type it in if you wanted to. There we go. Okay. All right. There's where I've selected everything. I'm not getting quite the selection. I don't know if it's my version of Fusion 360. It's not giving me quite the selection I get on my other machines. All right, so then if I wanted to, I can right click on this. I can, it says set the orbit. Not really worried about right that right now. Um, notice you can save as an STL right here. So you can start doing that. Um, there's a pressure pull there, which we just did. This again. You can also do that with Q. I'm just last time on that. All right. Now, the other thing we saw, modify, we can do a fillet. That's F. All right. So that's F. And I can make it, I, by the way, I can add it as a toolbar up here by just clicking on that. So it's automatically up there if you do that, but we're not going to. So I hit that. I say I hit F. You see, it's select an edge. I'm 
selecting all the edges off this right now. See how they're all there? Okay. Then I can sit there and say I want a radius. Uh, let's just say a 0.35. And I say okay. All right. And then all we did was create a hole. Put that right on the top. You know, we move that around a little bit. I'm going to leave those dimensions to be the same. So there it is. And the last thing we did, so that was creating a hole. Sketch we didn't really touch. We had create, modify, and then we did under model, we did render. And under render, we can do all kinds of, you know, you can physical material, appearance. So say physical material would be, the choices didn't show up here, but physical material might be, metal and then you can change the color of it you can do all kinds of things we'll get to that more down the road and then the last thing i want to show you because i got to get off here in a second is let's go back over to render go back to model that's where we were originally i can use this the little shifts down here to go back or forth in time all right i hope you enjoyed everything folks i hope the webinar was decent um it's that time. Let me see here. Okay. So how'd you enjoy? Let me just launch this real quick. How'd you enjoy the webinar? Okay. I'm going to count down. Four, three, two, one. Close the poll. Share results. Most of you guys liked it. I hope I do. When we go into some more things, you will enjoy. I think you'll get a lot out of this and do it. Okay, so going to get to use a lot of different hardware in the lab. We're going to make get to make great big sail planes. These things are bigger planes than you've built before. And uh, it's going to be a good spring. Looking forward to it, guys. Take care now. Bye.